Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. I'd like to welcome you to Real Magic Review, and today I'd like to talk to you about Enigma by Christian Grace. Before we do this, importantly, like and subscribe if you like it and you want to subscribe to it. Uh, have a look at card, no, not card magic course. That hasn't been called that for two years, has it, Steve? At least, onlinemagic.co. Onlinemagic.co, uh, previously known, formerly known as card magic course, is now way more than card magic. Sponge balls, ropes, mentalism, special guests, live sessions every week, then uploaded. Uh, a whole course on the Royal Road to Card Magic, currently up to page 200, every single thing in that book. So it's a perfect blueprint if you're someone that wants to go back and kind of refresh your skills. Loads of tricks, loads of moves, and of course, loads of other courses on there, uh, including one on how to practice. So have a look at that, uh, onlinemagic.co, ridiculous for 9 dollars I will be lecturing, we're talking about Blackpool, so I'll get this one in. A couple of things about Blackpool. I'll be lecturing at four o'clock on Saturday on the biggest myths in magic, those things that we're told that we shouldn't do or should do, or if we do this and that, and just kind of having a look at them and discussing them. Uh, I have also finally put out another podcast. You might be watching this way in the future, so sorry if this is completely um, uh, not time-friendly. That's wrong, but there you go. Uh, it's with Noel Quarter talking about, it was recorded just after the session and talking about Blackpool and how to kind of navigate uh, magic conventions and importantly dealers you know we not those sort of dealers uh, magic dealers saying and it's Blackpool magic dealers which is a lovely place um, <laughs> sorry. that could have gone on for a very long time the, the, uh, yeah, how, how do you make an informed decision about what to buy? I'll get there in the end. It, God, God, everybody lost, everybody lost uh, interest then, didn't they? But let's regain it now because I'm going to talk about Enigma. Uh, oh, yeah, the podcast, Steve Fortner's Magic Show. That was the old point of that. Have, have a look at it wherever you get your podcast. So quite controversial, some of the views maybe. I am going to talk about Enigma, and I am very much late to the party with this. I'm not because I've had it and been geeking out with it, but the I think my journey with it is maybe quite important and some of you may be able to empathise with it, so I will share that. And I'm not going to go into every single thing it does and how it does it, because that is not my place to do so. I think with things like this, as with all apps, I'm a little bit more careful, so I may sort of talk around it. But at the beginning when it came out, I was like, you know, it's a bit this, it's a bit that, it's not really my kind of thing. I think that was me kind of kicking back from the, the hype about it. Then I saw Christian do it and went, hang on a minute, no idea. Then I was, had an idea of what it would be and then said, there's no way I could do that anyway, my brain doesn't deal with that. And then I said, I couldn't resist. I said, Christian, I've got to have a look at this. Then I got into it and then went, actually, no, this is not what I thought it was. And then the more I got into it, the more I couldn't stop thinking about it and kept learning it and kept doing it. And I haven't performed it in public yet, but I have showed a few people with varying results. Those results are now way better and now I think it's something that really really does need to be talking about after the hype has died down after it is I'm seeing it for what it is without getting caught up in that FOMO and all that kind of thing these are my thoughts first of all it's not what a lot of people think people think you have to have a certain mindset to do this so I thought it was all progressive anagrams and things like this and I had to think around that now if you look at the gimmickless free or the tech-free version of this kind of thing. Um, is it Proteus? Uh, I'm not going to quote because I'll get it wrong. But anyway, there are ways of doing things like this that do require just a, a process mentally. Now, I'm not saying I can do that, but that for me is going to be incredibly difficult. And I am someone that can pretty much get his head around most things, not because I'm talented in any way, just because I'm, I've got ADHD and I hyper-focus and I will sit there for weeks, months, sometimes years not letting it go but for me it isn't it isn't something i'm going to find easy at any point down the road i think this changes all that and gives me a similar thing and that thing is someone thinks of pretty much anything depending on where you want to go with presentation on this and depending on how far you are down the line of performing this but let's say it's a man-made object and it's very easy to get at that point depending on what presentation you do you say i want you to imagine you're bringing it to me from anywhere and we're going to do some mind reading or whatever you want to say around words and around letters and I'm going to see if I can I can 
get to where you are, you know, in your head, just we're talking about the letters, etc. Then you go through a process. And if you want to do this one, you get your phone out and you say, right, I've got something here. I've committed to this now. You haven't said this word or this object or what this object is that you've brought to me at any time. You can even hand the phone to them. They say for the first time what it is. You turn it around and they're looking at a picture of it, right? Now, you don't have to do it that way. You can do it without the phone, depending on what your situation is. The, f the more practice you've done with this, you're not going to have to rely on the phone as much. So when I say without the phone, I mean, it doesn't become part of it. You can do it remotely. There's a method that's totally different with this, completely remoteless, when the, the phone doesn't have to come into play. There are ways to use the phone when it's on the table, when you're not getting it out. That's what I mean. It's absolutely miraculous. It's brilliant. But is it practical? And is it foolproof now i'm having a big problem with a lot of apps at the moment where i'm not going to do anything on stage if i read in the facebook groups oh it went down again yeah sorry it's going to be sorted in a minute i can't do that this doesn't require again depending on what way you do any of that stuff that can go down there's no connections or anything like that this is so in that way it's completely reliable it's self-contained and that's got that's got you covered this whole idea about getting the phone out, we do really have to stop saying when you get the phone out to write something or show somebody something, people are going to think it's an app. Getting your phone out is now way more natural than pretty much anything on the planet you can do. <laughs> there isn't a person on the planet that you will see in your everyday life, depending on your situation, I know, but let's say 98% of the time, you're going to see people constantly getting their phones out. It's more common than every, anything. It is, has become a natural gesture. So when you do it, people don't go, oh, here we go. In the real world, you go, right, I'm just going to Google something. It, you couldn't, it couldn't be more natural. Getting a pan of paper out and doing that is going to be, some people are going to go, what's he got that for? I haven't, seen, I haven't seen one of them in a while. You know what I mean? And I'm not, I do loads of stuff with bits of paper, so I'm not belittling that. But it, this idea of a phone, we're, we're done, right? We're over that now. Get your phone out to write something. People write songs on it. People write plays on it, movies. That's where people do their writing a lot of the time. So we're fine. The phone thing is fine. The fact that all your presentation completely gets rid of that. It's 98% of it is off the phone anyway. It's all done. And then you get your phone out. So that's sorted. The revelation is brilliant. It can play big depending on how you perform it. You can use loads of different ways of performing it, as I've said. And I don't repeat myself again. I do apologise. And this idea of how good you have to be at this kind of thing. Well, that's the point of this. This does all the heavy lifting for you. Is there a learning process? Absolutely. You are not going to pick this up and do it straight away. This is a skill to be learned. This is a routine to be learned, a skill to be learned. I talked about fourth dimensional telepathy. The idea of it, you know, Luch just brought out his proper lopes for it. I've done it many, many times. The idea of it is quite simple, but the, the learning of it and the understanding of it and why does this work is part of it. For me, that is the joy of this. This isn't a magic trick. And I know it sounds like hyperbole. I'm not affiliated. It's not like Christian is my best mate. We've had a couple of nice chats and it's been really great, but we're not like hanging out every night. I've met him actually in person like twice or three times properly. So this isn't any of that. This is genuinely... This is something that I think has so much potential and is something that you could spend months and potentially years honing, getting better at, learning and mastering. It is a concept. It is a, 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 a routine and an idea that can go in so many different ways. And once you get your teeth around it, which I have done, it becomes even more enjoyable. I'm just not tiring of this. I left it for a bit and then I was worried I'd forgotten it all and got back to it. Spent a couple of hours with it and it was great. The instructions are brilliant. He goes through so many different things with you. The Facebook group's amazing. You can tell the fake, you know, we're a few months down the line now and the Facebook group, well, more than that, is still loving it. And this is just incredible. Has there been any little glitches? Yes, not technically, but in people's performances, you know, certain words that don't come up. So there's this database that's being added to. So at launch, of course, it's not perfection, as is nothing. This is something I feel is going to be taken and it 
and Christian says it's, he's got loads of ideas. He's adding, adding different ideas. Um, he's got Shamir working on it, uh, a great app developer with him. He's got a great team working with him, you know, team of friends really making this as good as it can be. And that's, um, I'm having a mental block of Shamir's QR Genie and oh, the big one with Instagram. Sorry. Anyway, that's irrelevant. The point of all this and the reason I'm telling this is that I got it. I thought this is quite hard. Then it became easy. Then I forgot it for a bit and then I had to go and relearn it like any trick. It's like a sleight of hand trick. You get kind of rusty. You go back to it, but it has legs and I cannot stop going back to it. This is something that I will be amazed if anybody gets this, digs into it and goes, oh, it's not practical. It's not for me. The people who have said such things have not done that. I truly believe that anybody's you know this isn't for everybody you know it, it's not necessarily something i do out there at a gig but in those moments when i'm with someone i think all this stuff about oh it's weird touching hands no it's not in certain situations it's really it's great you know watch joshua day j do some of his performances where it's kind of you know it's, it's intimate yes that intimacy isn't right in some situations but with the right people it's great and you don't have to do the hand touching thing the dual reality is clever the learning that you'll get of just general mentalism, dual reality, performances, verbal cues, all of these kind of things you'll get just out of the teaching, I think makes this something incredibly special. Yes, it's kind of a couple of hundred bucks at the moment, I think. But that, to me, reflects not this thing of I'm going to charge loads for it and make loads of money. It's a thing of I'm spending every minute of my life on this to create something special. And it is something really, really special. This is Waffley. I've been waiting months to do this. I wanted to wait until I could perform it really smoothly and do it. I can't yet because it's, again, I've been away from it. But just know these things. I'll be amazed if you don't think it's brilliant. If you get it, I'll be amazed if you don't keep going back to it. And if you don't, it may be the same reason as me that you get barriers and think, oh, I've forgotten it and it's all psychological, but do go back to it. And I'll be amazed if you don't see the potential in this, if you get it. It is not for everybody, of course. There are a couple of things that needed to be ironed out that are now getting ironed out. The stuff coming up is very exciting. It's all going to be kind of usable. And I think this is something you're in for the long term. And the fact you've got to, you know, at the moment, get pay one price for this is, is a great thing. And no doubt there'll be pro tools and things like that. But, you know, I, I don't know that. So that's Enigma. Any questions you've got, there will be loads. Put them below. Um, Christian will be at Blackpool. Still, this is his baby. This is, every convention is all about Enigma for him. I know he's got some other great stuff, but uh, again, for him, it's not going away either, and that should tell you something. Okay, that's enough of my waffling. Have a good one. Go and have a look at onlinemagic.co as well. That's my baby. Have a look at that, and uh, like and subscribe if you like it. Take care. See you at Blackpool, hopefully. Four o'clock, Saturday afternoon. Cheers. Steve Faulkner's online. Steve Faulkner's magic show. Oh, shut up, Steve. <laughs>